Good afternoon. Friday the 13th of April and I'm heading up to Stormont. But I'm coming up here to see if I can video the uh, the Colin Davison exhibition that's on in here. And there's great views. And this is me in the long gallery of the Stormont Parliament buildings. And there's 18 of these portraits done by Colin Davison. And the, the whole exhibition is called Silent Testimony. And it reveals the story of 18 people connected by their individual experiences of loss through the Troubles, a turbulent 30-year period in Northern Ireland from the late 1960s onwards. And there's all information about Colin Davison. He's, you know, he's painted some top people. The Queen, uh, President Clinton, President Higgins, Kenneth Branagh, Brad Pitt, Ed Sheeran, Angela Merkel was used on the front cover of the Times magazine, or the Time magazine. Um, while painting these familiar faces, he became increasingly preoccupied not with their celebrity or standing, but more with their status as human beings. This continuing exploration of common humanity is the foundation on which silent testimony rests. And silent testimony is a powerful response which reflects on how the conflict has had and continues to have a profound impact on the thousands of individuals, the injured and their families, the families of those who died and the wider community. Silent testimony was shown in the Ulster Museum, the Centre for Cultural Irlandes in Paris, Dublin Castle, Nerve Visual Gallery in Derry, National Memorial Arboretum UK. The exhibition was also displayed at the United Nations headquarters in New York. And this one is to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement 2023. And this gentleman is Walter Simons. His son disappeared January 1981. And he's one of the disappeared. His remains were identified by the Rouge Gold Celtic Cross. Celtic Cross worn round his neck, which had belonged to his first wife. And Walter Simons passed away in 2019. So his son Eugene, one of the disappeared. And this lady is Flo or Lorden, John, her son, was killed in 1972 in Kernpur Street, West Belfast. He was 13 years old and was the second of six children. And Flo O'Reardon died in 2021.
This is Stuart McCausland, Stuart McCausland's mother, Lorraine, 23, was beaten to death by a gang in 1987. She was a single mother of two boys, Stuart and Craig. Eighteen years later, Craig, 20, was shot dead in front of his girlfriend and her two children. And that was in 2005. So, just a, a grief. Is that's done. This Lance Stewart's face. Absolutely horrible. These are, these are dreadful stories. How people have survived. And this is Emma Anthony. Her father Frederick was killed in Nurgan by an undercar booby trap bomb. His family were with him in the car. Emma was three. She was seated behind her father and sustained serious injury. She was not expected to survive. Emma still lives with the impact of her injuries. And I'm sure she does. Mental and physical. You never know what's behind somebody's smile or behind somebody's face. This is just horrible. This is John Gallagher, John's father, 29, was shot dead, 1969 in Armagh. He was married with three young children, one of whom was later injured in a landmine attack in Armagh in 1990. John Jr. was six years old at the time of his father's death. Dreadful. This is Mo Norton, her brother Terence Griffin, 24, was one of 12 people killed when a bomb exploded on a coach on the M62 in England in 1974. Mo recalls the family not knowing if Terence was called in the, caught in the bomb until they saw one of his record sleeves by the road or lying in the road on a lunchtime television program or report. You know, there, 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 there. And there's another gentleman. And this is Paul Riley. His daughter Joanne, age 20, was killed 1989 in Warren Point, Joanne had been working in a builder's yard when a new warning bomb exploded beside her office. She was killed instantly. The sitting for this portrait took place in Joanne's bedroom, kept exactly as she had left it on that day. The clock on the wall is stopped at 9.58 to the time of her death. Uh, this is, this is, uh, uh, I'm finding this, uh, a quite emotional. I can't imagine anything worse than, than than your son or your daughter being taken in such a horrible way. And this is Maureen Reed. Her Maureen Reed's husband and the father of her ten children, James, 44, was killed on the, in January 76 when a bomb was thrown into the Sheridan Bar in the New Lodge district of Belfast. Maureen never remarried and raised her family on a widow's pension. Throughout the years, she referred to James as Daddy. Maureen Reed died in 2015.
This is Margaret Yeoman, who was injured in 1982. She was working in an estate agent in Banbridge when a new warming, warning car bomb exploded close by. Much of the town was destroyed. Margaret sustained serious facial injuries, requiring a hundred stitches and was permanently blinded. She was a mother of four young children at the time. She is now a grandmother, but grieves that she will never be able to see her grandchildren. And Banbridge was my, was my hometown, and I remember that bomb going off. and the destruction it wrought. And this gentleman is Damien McNally. Damien, Damien McNally's father, Paul, 26, was shot dead in 1976 in the Ardern district of Belfast. Paul and a friend were crossing Brompton Road after leaving a bookmakers in the early afternoon when two gunmen approached and Paul died in the hospital two days after the attack, knowing his injuries would be fatal. Damien was four months old and his sister Karen was four years of age. It's just a, one after another, folks, and these, these 18 portraits represent only a fraction of the death the deaths that had happened during the Troubles. This is Anne Cathcart. Her father Patrick was shot dead in April 1975 in Carrick, Fergus. Patrick was born in India, had married a woman from Belfast and together they had three children. He was killed at home in front of his wife while his young children were asleep upstairs. My goodness, uh, just the horror. The horror, this is just shocking. Every one of these portraits has a shocking story. And there are so many others. This is Thomas O'Brien. was bereaved on the 17th of May 1974. His brother John, 23, sister-in-law Anna, 22, and two nieces, Jacqueline, for 17 months, and Anna, five months were killed when a new warming, warming car bomb exploded as the young family were walking along Parnell Street in Dublin. A total of 33 people lost their lives that day in separate bombings in Dublin and Mark and Thomas O'Brien died in 2022. That was absolutely horrific to lose all these folks. How, how do you keep on living when something horrible like this has happened to your family? This is Fiona Kelly. Her father, Jerry Dalrymple, 58, was killed in 1993 when gunmen opened fire on a van in which he and his colleagues were travelling to Castle Rock. The workmen had been carrying out building and renovation work for some months in the seaside town. Three other men died in the attack. Jerry Dalrymple lived in Rasharkin and was the father of six children. So, so workmen on their way to work, the van stopped and they just or maybe just a riddle of the side of the van as it went past, I don't know. It's just absolutely desperate. This is Jean Caldwell. Her husband Cecil, 37, was killed in January 1992 when a mine was detonated at Tiban Crossroads on the main road between Oma and Cookstown. He and seven colleagues died, and many others were injured when the bomb destroyed their work van as they travelled home for the weekend. James and Jean had two girls, and he never came home, like the seven others in the van. And there's pain etched on, on this lady's face. This is 
Jod Fong. I think the world should know about this, and this is why I'm following this. These, this horror lives on every day in these people's heads. Johnny Proctor's father, John, 26, was killed on the 14th of September 1981. Johnny was born the day before, and his father was visiting the Mid Ulster Hospital in Macrofelt to see his wife and newborn son when he was shot dead in the hospital car park. Nowhere was safe. Johnny was named after his father. <laughs> this lady here. These, these portraits are absolutely. Fantastic. Colin Davison is just uh, such a remarkable painter. And you, you literally can feel the pain coming out of the pictures. This is Mary Finnis. Her son Rory, 21, was shot dead in June 1991. Rory's body displaying evidence of torture. Oh my goodness. He was found barefoot and hooded behind the shops in the Cregan estate and died. He had been last seen with a close friend in the city centre pub five days before his body was found. Mary still lived surrounded by photographs and mementos of her son. Rory's son was born 18 months, just 18 months old at the time of... Or Rory's son was eight, just 18 months at the time of his death. So, we boys never grew up knowing their daddy. <laughs> and this is Jeff Smith. Jeff Smith and a colleague were driving near Canole, close to the border in County Fermanagh. 1985, when their Ford Sierra was caught in a landmine explosion. As a result of his injuries, Jeff was left permanently paralysed. His colleague, William Robert Gilliland, died in the attack. And the last the last one of the 18 is here. And this is Virtue Dixon. Her daughter Ruth, 24, died in a bomb attack in Ballycally on the 6th of December 1982. Ruth was celebrating her birthday in the Dropping Well public house when there was an explosion causing the roof to collapse. Sixteen other people lost their lives in that attack. A witness tells of hearing the DJ playing Happy Birthday. Oh my goodness. At the moment the bomb exploded. Ruth's son was six at the time of her death. Died suddenly when he was aged 30. This, this is just, just, just terrible. And this is the Lone Gallery in Stormont Parliament Buildings. This exhibition runs for for the whole of April, so you need to get here if you want to see this, and, and it is so worth seeing. If you want to see this, you need to get here within the next two weeks or so. Come and see this. It's a powerful exhibition. And unfortunately, there are so many other people's portraits could have been up on this wall. Are these walls? 
this is just a fraction and these people and their sad stories need to be remembered okay 